Next Radio 2018 with Broadcast Bionics. Next Radio. Uh, so, as Matt mentioned, I am Sharon Taylor. I'm the CEO of Omni Studio. We've worked in audio tech for about 10 years now, and for the last few of those, we have focused on podcasting. So today, I'm hopefully going to share some insights that we've had over the last little while. Um, I think James or Matt had a bit of a laugh when they were putting together the blurb, thank you, about how you can just fall into money pits uh, with podcasting. So hopefully I have a decent balance of buoying you as well as um, a bit of a realistic approach. I thought what would be good to start is some actual footage of the Omni staff when they first started getting into podcasting, and it kind of sums up what we thought about the industry um, and where we thought it was going. <laughs> there'd be money pits, there'd be champagne fountains, advertisers would be lining up to get onto podcasting, um, and then, you know, like all expectation versus reality, um, this ended up happening. Also, for anyone that uh, believes in physics of any kind, you can't dive in. It's really graphic when it keeps going, isn't it? Um, you can't dive into a hard substance, whether it's coins or anything, and not do a little bit of damage. So, you know, we have learned a lot of lessons over the last little while. Um, so hopefully today I can share some of those with you uh, and maybe predict kind of what's next in terms of more the technical side of things, which is where Omni comes into. Let's get the broken leg off the screen. <laughs> And let's jump into some data done by the IAB. So this is from our mates in the US, and let's look at what we're doing at the moment. So we're looking at podcast advertising revenues. They're saying what we're doing at the moment is 313.9 million US. Um, as all things, it's probably a little bit understated because the reality is no one's going to share those figures all the time. But what the IAB think is coming in terms of the future for podcast monetization is 2x growth, and we'll be doing 659 million by 2020. Now, like a lot of you, I probably looked at that in the first instance, thought, eh, that's pretty good. Let's get that money pit out here and let's start the dive. Um, but in you know, reality, you look at it and you go, hmm, is that, is that it? Like, what, how else can we move this forward? Let's look at how that money is made up at the moment. So the podcast advertising landscape, we're seeing advertisers. I mean, the plan to use is probably the one that gives me the most confidence in terms of how we keep growing that pie to 650 million and above. I'm a little bit dismayed by the have used and uh, regularly use. I'd like those two to be a little bit closer together, I think, so that we can keep building this medium. You know, what is it that you know, we're doing with advertising agencies that are going to move us from that 319 to 659? Because if you look at it in the scheme of things, this is to scale, I checked with my um, designer. That's podcasts in 2020, and that's what radio is doing. Now, we're a very unique podcast company because we're not prophesizing the doom of radio. Far from it. Like, I think that podcasting is going to be really additive and not cannibalistic to the radio world. But still, you look at it and there's quite a difference, isn't there? So what else could we be doing to move us forward? How do we get from that opportunity, that excitement, and what really a lot of people and for any ad agencies in the room, are testing the waters to actually serious revenue. Like, what can we do next? So let's look at what we're doing first. So now we have all these different pieces of technology. We've got host-read ads. We've got branded content, sponsorships. Logically, all of those mediums will stay and we'll just continue building up the usage, and that will get us a part of the way there. What are advertisers doing with these at the moment? You know, like, look at the direct response. I mean, direct response works 100%, it works. Does it need to be 75% of that pie? And I wonder if, as an industry, we can scale to and past 659 million US if we're still doing direct response. Like, where, where is the technology kind of coming into it? You know, look at the ad type. The host red ad is still, above all, you know, definitely the best type of ad. 550,000 podcasts out there in the market, you know, you've got your top 10, you've got your next 20% that can, you know, have the numbers that ad agencies are looking for. What about the other 60, 70, 80% of people? How are they going to make money? And when we talk about host red ads, I still can't believe that we're having this conversation about whether it's baked in or whether it's dynamically inserted. Um, I'm going to play a small podcast ad from one of my favourite podcasts at the moment. And you know it's one of my favourites because it's actually hosted on a competitive platform, but I still tell everyone about it and I'm driving his traffic through the roof. Um, so this is from a podcast called Market Snacks Daily. 
The following message is brought to you by our sponsor for today, Vitamin Water. Are you suffering from stagnant workflow, lemon flavor depletion, cross-platform synergy, having a career? You might be entitled to advice from Brandon, Vitamin Water brand ambassador and professionally busy man. Call 833-477-8339 to see if he can squeeze you in today. Because as Brandon said first, before anyone else, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Disclaimer, Brandon is an unpaid spokesperson for Vitamin Water with zero years of experience who should not be trusted with business advice and did not make up the saying about life giving you lemons. So, I mean, look, it's a great ad. As a show of hands, who would have thought that would be baked into the podcast file? And who would have thought it would be dynamically inserted? And who has no idea what I'm talking about or is sitting on their hands? Um, so the fact is, and this will shock you, I have no idea. And I think that's kind of indicative of the fact that why are we having these conversations still about baked in versus dynamic? The following message... Oh, it's a really good ad, so I thought I'd play it again. Uh, you know, look, the piece of the pie that astounds me is looking at the podcast advertising type of buy and how programmatic is 0.7%. And I wonder if to get to and past 659 million US, we need to think a little bit more about technology and about scale. Programmatic is a dirty word in our industry. I, myself, over the years have been guilty about calling it a race to the bottom. And it's true in a lot of instances. But I wonder if looking ahead to the future of podcasting, there is a need and a demand for big podcast marketplaces, tailored, like, well-written, beautiful ads, but that have access to the 80%, the 70%, the people that aren't able to sell a live read at a 50, 60, $180 CPM if you're Gimlet Media, you know? Um, so does this conversation need to move forward? And I guess my answer is yes at the moment, because how else do we get to and past 659 million? So now let's look at some tech that is now available and coming in the future that I think is actually kind of really cool um, and I think also will help us move to and from um, that marker of money. So the first thing that I want to talk about is personalised ads. Has anyone heard of a company called A Million Ads? Steve Dunlop. If you don't know this man and this company, get to know him. Uh, they are doing some incredible stuff in terms of ad personalisation like this. How amazing is the Virgin Atlantic sale? As amazing as an advert that knows it's the morning. In fact, it's Monday morning, and that the weather outside is cloudy, and that you're currently in London, and that your name is, well, maybe that's too far. The Virgin Atlantic sale. I will say that when I built this presentation, James had me on the morning slot, and that would have just blown your minds if it had actually been the morning. Uh, <laughs> but we are where we are. So, you know, that's amazing. Pandora is doing a similar thing in terms of being able to do different ad creative at different times of the day. These are things that will entice advertisers into the industry and will move us to and past that $659 million mark um, once we obviously wrap our heads around the technical limitations potentially of the podcast side of things. But that is a story for another time. Let's focus more on that money pit. How Let's talk about some voice activated ads which are happening in terms of, um, no it's me James, it's not them, don't need to look at them. Uh, let's look about voice activated ads and what they're doing in terms of um, some Amazon skills. This is a relatively long run up but for anyone that is like a lawn or a patio enthusiast you are going to love this content. Andy's Backyard, a podcast on better outdoor living is presented by Super Deck Coating from Sherwin-Williams. Welcome everyone. Today's show is all about how to build your own deck for a fraction of contractor prices in one weekend with little or no carpentry skills. Yeah, I know. I know you're saying, yeah, right. No skills. Uh-huh. Seriously, stay with me and I'll prove my point and you'll save a small fortune. Hey, would you like to learn more about my secret on deck finishes that withstand 100 degree plus temps? I'm interested. It's called Super Deck Coating from our so that's from a company called Instramatic, um, and obviously it plays well to any kind of voice-activated technology. Um, I had to play the whole thing because it's a copyright issue, but uh, I hope, you know, if you do like lawn podcasts, check out Andy's Backyard, because I'm sure that's a good listen. Um, let's jump ahead, let's look at Alexa. What could Alexa be doing and smart speakers in terms of podcast monetization? This is a really, really simplistic mock-up, and it's kind of idealistic of where I'd like the industry to go to, but you can purchase things in the middle of you know, Amazon feeds at the moment. So why couldn't you sell tickets to a show? Why couldn't you take donations? Why couldn't you sell merchandise? Like there's a whole wealth of podcast revenue opportunities out there, um, and things like the smart speakers are making this possible. 
Your donations, another thing we should touch on, like there's a lot of companies out there at the moment that are finding new, technical, wonderful ways to make more money, get donations to your show if you can't get advertising. And then obviously paywalling and exclusive content, which is anyone that is in the tech industry here would know is really hard with RSS feed technology, but there are companies like Breaker out there that are making it work. So if you have, you know, hidden access or content, anything that you want to do as a value add, I'd highly suggest looking at this to kind of Again, build that money pit as big as you can. And think larger than just CPMs. Let's think more than just, you know, how did the ad get me measured and, you know, is it baked in, is it dynamic? You could do tours, you could do festivals in Thailand, you could option the content out to make TV shows, movies, etc. Like, I think that the way to get from 659 to a billion, to five billion, to more and more, is to do what radio did as well and start doing live events, start looking at more of the things and the options you've got available. I'm out of time, but I thought I would be because I am verbose as an individual, so I um, put t key takeaways. Um, the nicest thing anyone's ever used to describe me is verbose, I promise, um, <laughs> and some thoughts. So if anyone has any questions, please reach out. Thank you. Sharon Taylor, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon.